Welcome back to the 200 challenge. Current score, getting into this episode, 267 kilos of documented weight saving features off of my 964. Getting lighter for every episode we go. I ran into this company called Carl's Motorsport and they sell Motec. So I looked in their catalog and I bought everything they had. And that, this is how that looks. This time we're gonna figure out how the electrical concept of my car is gonna look how we really minimize wiring, how we use the, the most modern technology we can. And that's why this is Wireless Porsche. So this time around is really about just, just taking everything that is not necessary when it comes to the electrical system out. We've already stripped it in one of the other episodes, so I've already accrued for, for some of the things, but I want to show you really how it works as well. So very traditional setup as it looks originally. You have a battery. It essentially goes to your ignition switch, and then it goes in here. This is your front electric, a, a very heavy, sturdy piece here that has all kinds of relays and fuses and all that. And then it goes out to your instrumentation, your switches and whatever they might be. So, so battery, a little switch, relays and stuff, and then it goes out to the car. And this is essentially the new setup that I'm going for. Battery goes to a kill switch. In this example, I'm using a very big relay hooked up really to a kill switch. You, there's several ways of doing this. In the end, I'm gonna use a component from CarTech here. Uh, that then lights up the PDM. So the PDM is a power distribution module. And what that does is it replaces this whole thing. So you take this and you turn it into this. This is a few kilos. This is like 500 grams. And this is a semiconductor component. It has relays, fuses, and logic processor built into it. So you can really do a lot of cool stuff with this. And uh, also what you do when you have one of those is all of your buttons, you typically switch them over to something like this, a button panel. I'll show you later how this works. And that means that the traditional setup of having battery hooked up to a relay and then the relay hooked up to a switch with cables all over the car, that just completely goes away because these eight buttons have four cables total. So let's uh, have a little think about where I'm gonna put all these components. So for the first step here is where are we gonna put the battery? Because you can see that my frunk doesn't look anything like a normal 964 frunk with the fuel cell, the old tank, and my fan unit up there. Um, this typically goes down there, as you know. This is a very lightweight, this is a lithium polymer battery. So I'm thinking a really good spot for the battery could be over there. Uh, it looks really strange. And uh, the, the reason why I'm not gonna put it there is not only that it looks really strange, but also that you have a battery in the same compartment as you have a fuel cell. That doesn't feel very good. And it's actually against the Swedish regulations, even if actually the original 964 is built like that. So, how about putting the battery up there? Uh, it's very light, so I'm not very concerned with moving it around or moving it backwards or so on. Uh, there is going to be a carbon fiber separator panel here. So that means that it's going to be in one compartment and the fuel cell is another compartment. So that's where I'm going to put it. And the next question then becomes, if the battery goes there, then where does this guy go? And uh, I think there's quite a few different cool options for this. One cool option for this is just put it on the other side of this one, maybe over there. Uh, most of the consumer things that this one is gonna be entertaining actually sits up here with the windscreen wipers, the fuel pumps, the lights, the indicators, the horn, all, all of those things, it's actually up here. Uh, it has things that goes in the back, but most of them are actually related to the instrumentation or the ECU or the tail lights, which is way back instead. I have an idea of where these components are gonna go. And as I plan the cable routing, I wanted to make this really graphical so that I can really understand what I'm doing. So I, I put this board up. This is the, the contours of the 964. So I'm gonna place the components where they're gonna go in the car, and then I'm gonna do the cable routing, understand how everything ties together. So let's start 
with the power management. Show you a little bit in detail how this works. So, the second the PDM gets power, I've programmed it so that this power output here powers this keypad here. So when I turn it on, you see it lights up, right? And then you can program the, the PDM to do different things. For example, once it is powered up and I press the indicator here, I have programmed it so that it will actually blink two of the outputs here. So actually, if I would connect light bulbs to two of the correct outputs here, they would blink together with that, right? Then I programmed it so that this is the setting where it only indicates that the kill switch is in mode on. If I do this, I power the car, so this would turn on the dash, for example, and it turns on the parking lights. If I start the engine, it would be in this mode here. So this, uh, you would have to have a start button and a few things like that. But this would automatically then turn on the ABS. So I've programmed all of these things. And here I could turn on the low beam. And this would be to change to the high beam. And here's the fan. And a few different things, right? So this is not to show you the final programming of this. But it's to show you that with, with two cables in this CAN communication line, you can do so many things. Imagine how many cables you would have had in the original setup to control eight buttons with the indication lights like this. It would literally be one cable per function, but here you do all of this in two cables. So the so next part in this episode is, of course, to look at the instrumentation, which in the 964 looks stunning, perfect, it's really nice. But boy, is it complicated. This is not really modern technology and what I'm looking at is, is really building this, this mix of, of modern and classic. And since I pulled every wire out of my car and threw some of them away, I need to start over from the beginning with all of this. And this is actually fun, I like this. Uh, let me show you what I mean when I say that this is not really modern. So you take the, the, the TAC, this one has the onboard computer in, in my car. If you look at the number of connections that you need in this, I don't know what it is, but it's at least 20. And if you look at the other dials, like this is the, the speedometer, uh, this one also has a connector. And all of these, it's, it's a whole wealth of connectors. And, and this is because this car is indeed very analog. Look at this guy, big circular connector in the middle there. So technology used in this car is, is what was available at that time. Uh, really analog, everything that does something in there has a separate wire. And uh, this is not how any of these cars are, are made anymore, and it's not the technology I'm gonna apply. So, let's have a look at something else. So, here is another way of doing it. So this is a Motec C1212, which is a display that is bigger than some people's living room TV. Maybe not anymore, but maybe in the old days. So this is a modern display. It has one connector for power and CAN bus, so everything will go in through two wires. You can connect some buttons and some sensors to it if you want. It has a GPS connected, so uh, uh, it will actually take the lap times for you. It's a full logger, so everything that happens in the car on the CAN bus network, all of it gets saved into here. So really cool. Uh, as I do this, I will have to do some heavy modification up here because it can't sit like this, it has to go further in. And I think in the end, I'm actually gonna cut all of this away and just start over from the beginning. But that's, that's a fun story for another day. Uh, then I'm thinking that over here, I'll put a vent, and here, I might put an oil pressure light so that I don't forget running out of oil pressure as I did once. And to control the whole beauty, I'm gonna use one of this, a CAN bus keypad. And this one is gonna go maybe there, Maybe there, don't know, because I need to put a seat in so I can see what I can reach. Kill switch is probably gonna go here somewhere. I'm gonna have to redo this whole piece here anyway because none of it, none of it really fits. Um, the critical functions I'm gonna have on the steering wheel like, like blinkers and, and washer and horn and so on because that's something you absolutely have to reach. 
I'm also going to use one of this. This is a rotary controller and this one is going to go over there. So that one I will always be able to reach because it's in between the seats and my car won't have a handbrake. So that will be something that I can put really critical buttons on because I will always be able to reach that with my right arm. And we're back at the board. Let's have a look at what I did. So I put the display here. I put the rotary controller over there. I have the other stuff as I had before. As I flip my kill switch, the keypad comes on. When I press this once, it will power up the car. And what that means is that this cable here that is set for the display, that will power up. So if I do that, we see this. Comes on and then it says, I'm air cooled. Which is really cool, right? And this now communicates over the CAN bus. So we have this little cable here that goes to the PDM. It goes to the keypad and it goes to the rotary controller. So for example, if I over here press the hazard light, it blinks over there and that enables and disables the output for the light bulbs here. And when you look at the display, you see over here and you see over there, it blinks. Really cool. And if I turn the headlight on, this goes on. If I turn the high beam on, that goes on. So really you, uh, you, you have a lot of control and you can do some really funky stuff with this. The display comes with something called Display Creator, which is something that Motec invented. Uh, it takes a while to get used to. It's not very difficult. The software for this one, the PDM software is also really good. It's, uh, it's really straightforward. Just put the logic conditions in and it does stuff for you. Uh, what I've done with this is I have an RPM counter here. I have the speed here, oil pressure, fuel pressure, oil temp, throttle, brake pressure. Uh, I have my lap time here, my best lap and a gain and loss. So, so this one tells me if I'm doing better or if I'm doing worse. And this is all good if, if you are driving on the track. Daily driving, which will not happen a lot with this car, is this view here. So, you have the possibility to, to really customize what, what you want to do and how you want it to look. I'm, I'm still learning this. I just got a few hours into this and maybe two, two evenings or something like that. It's really fun, really cool. So, this now needs to be connected to the brain of the engine. What's that? For the brain of the car, this is what I'm using, a Motec M150. Uh, maybe a little bit overkill for this project. I could have gone maybe with Little Brother, which is called M130, which is the same thing, just less IOs. However, I, I didn't want to find myself in a situation towards the end of the project with just a little bit too few inputs. Uh, price difference between the two is not huge either, so I thought I'd maybe just go for the Big Brother. Original location for the ECU in the 964 is just here under the seat with all the cables to the engine going this direction and everything going up to the dash in that direction. So since this car is so light on cabling and really most of the cabling is around the engine back there, I'm thinking maybe the ECU should go back there. With the engine in the back and all the cables back here, then maybe I should also put the ECU back here. And there's a really neat spot just there, because in, in my build I don't have the, the coils there anymore. I took them out in one of my previous builds here. The coils are actually on the spark plugs, it's what you call coil on plug ignition. Um, if I put the ECU there, which I'm not completely convinced on yet because of the environment back here, but if I put it there, then uh, cables will be really short, really neat. And there's a benefit in that, the, the cables and the harness will go straight into the ECU with no connector or big harness in between. So mm, an idea, the other idea I've had is to put a little connector piece just there so that I, I make like a sub harness in the back and then I have the ECU in the front. A little bit thinking left to do on that, but before that I want to connect this to the rest and see that it all works. And with that, we're back at the board and we put it all together. So we see all the goodies here now with the ECU in the back of the car coming down, connected with this communication line. We also see that there's a network cable coming out of the ECU going into this little router and another network cable going up, connecting to the dash. And this little thing here, I'm going to stow this away somewhere in the car. It's a little wireless router. And what this allows me to do is that when I put the, the logs out of the car and when I program the dash and the ECU, I can do that wirelessly. Pretty neat. I have another computer here. This one I use to program the PDM. 
So it's pretty neat when you have two laptops next to each other. Makes it easy to, to really be efficient, do a little change here, then make sure that that's mirrored on the other side, because really all the components need to communicate with each other. And let's fire it up and see how it works. So we turn it on, it will turn on the dash just as before. Now it will also turn on the ECU, and the ECU communicates over this CAN bus wire, and you'll see up on the display, throttle position, lambda on the right bank, lambda on the left bank, fuel pressure, oil temp, oil pressure, what gear you're in, your tack. And this is an example of how it communicates. You have an icon here on traction control. So traction control in this car will take the wheel speeds in through the ABS and it will compute it down there. And the way you turn it on right now is you turn this dial and you see the icon lights up and we can have various strengths on the traction control shifting this one. Another cool thing here is that if I press ignition here, turning the injectors and the igniters on, you'll see that this one here, which is the fuel pumps, it actually primes the fuel pumps. So it's the ECU sending a signal here, turning the two fuel pumps on to prime the system. And it's all connected through here. And another thing is the starter here. So the starter actually doesn't work, right? And that is because I'm not holding the clutch switch in. So if I hold the clutch switch in, the starter actually runs. And you can see on the display that it says cranking engine. However, the engine is not starting. And that is because ignition is not on. And if ignition is on, and I press start here, it will actually run a start sequence. And that will automatically start the engine with one press of a button. You don't have to hold it in and it will crank the engine until it's running. You can also set it for automatic restart. So if you stall the engine on the track, it can automatically restart the engine so that you're back and, and you can go racing again. So this is, as you can see, super nerdy, but it's also really cool. And why did I do all of this? Well, to me, putting all the components up on the board here really satisfied my curiosity and also my concern for how this was gonna work in the end, because I've never played around with MoTeC before. Actually, I've never played around with CAN bus either. So this was a, a first for me. It's not terribly difficult. The, the MoTeC software is pretty well laid out. Some of the things are, are not terribly easy at the first go. It took me a while to get everything to communicate, but now it does, and it's gonna make the process of installing it in the car so much easier. So with that, let's take it apart, see what it weighs, and conclude that. And here we go again, scoring time. I got my wireless scale here, got my computer there so I can see it. I had a lot of things in the cabin before that I'm not gonna use anymore. Jaw sensors, different dials, ignition lock, who needs that? Different kind of wires. All things that I took out in one of my previous episodes, I didn't weigh this because this was all the buttons and stuff. This is three kilos, just this stuff here. I'm gonna to top up this three kilos with, and I'm gonna be careful now because these are expensive. The five beautiful, immaculately looking dials that you have in a 964 that I'm gonna abandon. And we are up at five kilos on this. And this episode is really a follow-up of one of my very, very first episodes where I pulled all the cables out of the car. At that point, I thought I was gonna need three of these harnesses to, to cover the entire car. As I'm going forward now, I can see that I only will need two because it's gonna be so incredibly light on wires. This is 1.3 kilo, adding that to the five, so we're up to 6.3 kilos. And now for the new stuff. The beautiful display, careful, it's expensive. 1.7 kilos, and these two keypads, they don't really weigh that much at all. 1.9 kilos, so from 5.3 kilos, take two kilos off, I'm gonna make that an even three kilos. I'm not weighing the PDM, because I accrued for that in the episode 166, so I've already taken that into account. It's about 500 grams, so it's, it's really nothing in all of this. Why did I do this? Did I do this because of three kilos weight saving? No, not, not really. I did this because this is super cool. And it gives me that perfect mix of modern and classic with, with all of the logging, all the race functions, really get it to feel as, as a modern racer. 
and I like electronics if you haven't figured that out. So this is really straight up my alley. And that is the end for today. We really figured out how this things communicate. I hope you understand the concept of, of canvas and how you can do some really cool stuff with that. We saved three kilos, meaning we're up at 270 kilos. We figured out that we need to cut the entire dash out of the car as well. So that's going to be another fun endeavor for, for another time. I did figure out a few things as I did this as well. One thing is that the, the, the Motec M150 is overkill for this application. I could have gotten away with the Motec M130. I'm using very few of the outputs the, the way I've done it. The PDM30, however, you need one of those. You will not get away with the PDM15 on one of these cars unless you do something really crazy. So with that, 270 kilos down the road. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe to my channel. If not, do something else. See you next time.